Hello and welcome to my editing suite here in good old Whitsitt, North Carolina. I'm out here editing, but earlier today we went up to Greenhill Center for North Carolina Art to meet James Barnhill. You might know James as a sculptor best known for the 11 foot sculpture of General Green in the circle right next to the Carolina Theater. He's going to taking us through a sort of Bob Ross type lecture, if you will, step-by-step -step process on how to paint a face. First from the front, then from the profile, and then from three quarters. Before we do that, let's get to know Jim a little bit as he prepares for his lecture. Uh, I became a sculptor, I guess, more or less when, even though I've always, always made things, uh, I started sculpting from the figure portrait. Uh, when I went to UNCG in grad school, this was, I got a master's degree in uh, 82, 1982. And, um, I had gone down from a painting class to the basement studios where some students were working from a model and she was, they were doing a portrait bust and I thought, man, I'd love to do that. So I asked Peter, uh, excuse me, uh, Andy Martin, who was the painting instructor, if I could finish out his uh, class downstairs and he agreed to it. And uh, I never looked back, I, it's, I just became a sculptor. Mm -hmm. um, I seemed to hit all my buttons, float my boat, turn my crank all over. <laughs> Was there anything specific about it that you liked more than other mediums? I think for painting, for me, I was such a tight realist, it got to be very tedious. And in sculpture, also, I, I, uh, composition was sort of a challenge to me. How do you arrange the pictorial, or how do you break up the pictorial plane on the canvas was always an issue. I was so concerned about rendering something, I just forgot all about a composition. It wasn't until much later that I began to figure that out. And, um, you know, I think with sculpture, with working from the figure, it was its own composition. It was a singular object. It took care of itself. Um, and also, just the physical act of moving around and working, sort of a bringing together of, of the aesthetic art and engineering in a way. And I think that sort of just appealed to all my senses. So, yeah. Um, so today, what we're gonna do is uh, just go over some basics of the proportions of the head and the face. Um, a lot of people have trouble uh, rendering, rendering a face. We're not going to worry about a portrait, per se. Just basic proportions, the rules of proportions. And maybe take some of the mystery out of, of uh, how to draw a competent head, just what's going on. Um, you know, the features are easy enough to draw, but where they go in regard to one another, sometimes that's a bit of a challenge. So, first thing we're going to do uh, is draw um, an egg shape, and it doesn't have to be perfect if you're doing this at home. Uh, pointy end of the egg is kind of at the bottom, that'll be our chin, all right? Um, now, probably the most challenging issue or the biggest problem is, is where the eyes go. The eyes go right in the middle. This distance from here to here is the same as from here to here. This distance from here to here, same as from here to here. Uh, our tendency is to look, when we look at somebody's face, we look here. This is where all the information is. There's not a lot of information up here. When there's not a lot of in information, the tendency is when we're drawing it, is we collapse it, we condense it, we make it smaller than it really is. You gotta fight that tendency, okay? Uh, from where the eyes are, if you want, you can even do a, a center point, a uh, axis of symmetry is what you call that. 
um, the base of the nose, if you split that difference again, this is one half, all right, that's where the eyes are. The nose comes in at about halfway again, or maybe slightly above that, but somewhere in that range, never longer than that. And then the mouth, our, our, uh, so that's either a quarter or we can call that a half as well. Um, here the proportion or the uh, percentage changes just a little bit, the uh, ratio, I guess. Uh, if you take the distance left over from the nose and the chin, divide that into thirds, the mouth is at the upper third. Now, as you can see, already this starts to look like a human because we've got the proportions or, or the uh, ind indicators, these lines uh, are, are right where eyes, nose, mouth go, and it's start, already starting to look human. So, let's put some eyes in there. Um, what we want to do is draw an almond shape such that, I haven't got it quite right, such that we've got about one eye distance between the two eyes. And then also about an eye's distance from the outer edges of the eye to the edge of the face. That's, and remember, these are just rules of thumb. Some people's eyes are slightly closer together than one eye's distance. Some are set slightly apart. But this is a way to begin and to sort of make a judgment to get it about right. So when I was teaching elementary school, I used to tell the kids, all right, we got a football shape there. Now we're going to put the iris in. The iris is the color part of the eye, okay? And you want to draw a circle such that the upper part of the circle kind of goes under the upper lid. If you can get it like that to where the bottom of the iris rests on, or there can even be a little bit of a white space between the lower lid and the upper lid. But notice how I've got the top of the iris slightly cut off hanging, as it were, from that upper lid. And the reason is, as we, as we look out, as we gaze in a normal um, uh, vision, just looking out, our upper lid comes down a little further than our lower lid comes up. So it tends to cover the top part of the iris. Now, if you have light colored eyes, you're going to be able to see the pupil like that. So I'll put in a little circle right in the center. If you've got very dark, dark brown eyes, chances are you won't even see the pupil. Uh, and I used to tell my elementary school kids, we've got a football, a softball, and a ping pong ball, like that, okay? That, that's an easy way to remember this. Now, let's get a nose going. Uh, what I tend to do is drop an imaginary vertical line. I don't draw it in, but a line coming down to where the nose might be. And what I'm going to do is draw in the nostrils left and right, which typically are going to be a little wider than an eye, probably an eye and a quarter. Maybe a, when I say that, an eye and a quarter, I mean this distance plus a quarter more, okay? Uh, and again, just to make it simple, I'm going to put a little parentheses over here and another little parentheses over here for the edges of the nostril. And then I'm going to take two parentheses and lay them down, but maybe tilt them just a little bit like this. Watch this. I'm not going to touch like that. And then I've got more or less a nose. Now, if your person, if the light is coming from one side or another, you might see the suggestion of you know the bridge or the, the edge of the nose like that. But generally, there's no line. Uh, and certainly though, if there's a three, if the person is turned slightly, you're going to see the, the far edge of the nose, not a line here, but over here. Uh, all right, let's get the mouth going. Um, I said, this will be the opening of the mouth, that third of the way down. Remember, we divided this into thirds, all right? So now I'm going to draw an upper lip. This is the little suggestion of a philtrum, that little cleft right there below the nose and above the, and then mouth is going to be a bit wider than the nostrils. Probably just almost under the iris, or excuse me, under the uh, pupil, like that, okay? Um, oddly enough, the corner of your mouth 
lines up exactly with the outer line of your canine or your eye tooth right there, the pointy teeth, the uh, vampire teeth. Uh, that, that is exactly where they line up. And then we're going to put, excuse me, a little, sometimes, and again, everybody's mouth is different. So if you're drawing somebody, you're going to want to draw the particular contours of that person. But I'm gonna put a little, uh, the, that little bump in the middle right there, that's called a turbicle, I believe. Um, and then the lower lip typically is a little uh, fuller than the lower, or than the upper lip, but not always. So, but uh, just, you know, rule of thumb, typically it's a little wider like that, okay? So now we've got a mouse. So we've got something now going on that um, looks like a fairly competent head. Um, now we need some ears on our, our person. The ears line up, oddly enough, if you take an imaginary line from your eye and go back, you'll wind up where the ear attaches at the top. And then if the base of the nose around here is where the ear attaches at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is a skinny letter C on this side, such that lines up with the eye and the base of the nose. Now, you may have a lobe that extends below, or you may have attached lobes, uh, purely uh, the genes. And again, there's our other ear. So we don't see the entire ear you're looking back at, and the ears are laid somewhat against the head, so you don't see a full you know, shape there. Um, another interesting thing. Now, we're going to put the neck on. We need a neck, otherwise we've got sort of a little floating balloon here. We don't want that, okay? Uh, the neck is not like a post on which the head fits, okay? If you'll touch right behind your ear, right underneath the bottom, you'll feel a bony projection right there. That's called your mastoid bone. And if you pull your finger right off of that, you're immediately on to the muscle it's actually the sternocleidomastoid muscle, this thing right here, which comprises a lot of your neck. So all that to say is basically your neck attaches at the base of the ear. So you can come in a little bit like that. Left. You can have a heavy neck, a slender neck, depending on your person, okay? Then typically what I'll do, just, just for the sake of, of this demonstration right here, is put a curve like the uh, neck since the, the neck is something of a cylinder, we'll have a t-shirt type of, and then you may even want to bring this up and around the back like that to make it look as if it's going around the back and then we can add some shoulders like that, okay? Uh, eyebrows, typically, they're just going to fit up here with, uh, I don't really have a, a rule of thumb there. Uh, looks like a little bit of a worried person, but. Uh, and then uh, hairline is going to be somewhere up here. It's Uncle Leo. Uh, what's that? Uncle Leo. <laughs> Uncle Leo. Okay. From uh, Seinfeld. Uh, we could have we could have a bald person. Uh, we could uh, you could put it, at this point you can uh, go anywhere you want. Long hair, short hair. You put a beard on the person. Uh, uh, we could have bangs. Uh, any kind of hair you want. Uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe it could be an Egyptian. Uh, now, one other way of checking your proportions, the distance from the base of the nose to the chin is the same as the base of the nose to the eyebrows is the same as the eyebrows to the hairline is the same to the top of the head like that. You see that? Um, so that probably covers more or less uh, the basics for a frontal view, mm -hmm. uh, proportions of the head and face. Uh, so if you'll practice this at home, and we can get, you know, we can come in here and, and start adding, put some uh, eyebrows, or excuse me, eyelashes on there. Um, and again, hair, however you want. Uh, you know, maybe the ears wouldn't even show. Um, you know, hair could be something like this, uh, could be tight to the head, short hair, 
uh, any number of things you want. It's just a... It varies again, a little bit. Yeah, it depends yeah. on who you're drawing. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's what it comes to. Now, having gone over this, let's do something similar uh, with a profile. This time, however, and our person's going to be looking in this direction, so what I'm going to do is take my egg, egg shape, and this time I'm going to shift, this is the chin again, but this time I'm going to tilt our egg a, a, a little bit like this to get the chin pulled out a little further, okay? Um, now, so we're going to, uh, the same things apply uh, in a, in a number of ways. The eyes are going to be right in the middle. Okay, so there's our eyes. Base of the nose halfway down or a little less. There's that. And then the mouth will come down one third. We divide, remember we divide this into thirds, so the mouth is going to be at the upper third from the base of the nose to the chin. Again, already this is starting to look human just by putting in uh, the uh, locations of the various features of the face. Okay, we'll start with the eye. Now, what you're going to want to do is kind of make a pie wedge here, uh, you know, a, a slice of pie. But watch what, and I'm going to set it, here's, here's the outer edge of my egg, okay? I'm going to set the eye in a little bit because your eyes are set back in a socket, okay? Now, remember when I said the upper lid comes down a little further than the lower lid comes up? Well, here's where something interesting comes into play. Because of that, here's, here's your upper lid coming down a little further than the, the lower lid is coming up, okay? So your eye is going to look something like that. Uh, but the wedge has a slightly downward, even though the eye is looking horizontally across, there's a slight downward angle. The lower lid is set back just a little further than the upper lid because the upper lid is coming around the curvature of the eye. It's coming down a little further, so it's also coming out just a little bit. So here's our iris, and maybe you can see the pupil. Uh, there's our eye. All right, nose, I'm going to put it right here. We're going to make a little adjust, adjustment. There's, there's the bridge of your nose right there that comes in just a bit, then out a little bit, and then back into the face, all right? Now, here's where we're going to put a nostril on, and this time you can see the back edge of the nostril, all right? And again, depending, this, is, this depends on your person. Some people's features tend to come out just a little bit. Some people's are pushed in a little bit. Some people are absolutely vertical. Depends on your particular uh, model that you're drawing from. Okay, so I'm gonna drop an imaginary line from the eye, and I'm just gonna say, this, this is where my nost nostril is going to go, okay? And then, I'm, there's my, remember my parentheses, this is the closed parentheses. Then I'm gonna lay one down right here for the opening of my nostril, like that, okay? Now, uh, let's go to the mouth. This little guy right here, the philtrum, that little cleft right above the upper lip. It's not way back here at the nostril. It begins somewhere, here's the tip, front tip of the nose, here's the back of the nostril. The philtrum comes somewhere underneath that nostril right there like that, okay? It's not way back here, but you want to split the difference. Again, depending on your person, it may be a little further this way, maybe a little further back into the face, okay? Then we've got the upper lip. Uh, again, I drop a, an imaginary line, say, from the pup, excuse me, the nostril, and then determine maybe my corner of my mouth will be back here. So there's the uh, philtrum bit right there, and so there's my upper lip. There may be a little bit more of a curve to this. And then the lower lip, again, a little fuller like that. And then what we're going to do is add just a little bit of a knob of a chin, okay? Like that, all right? And then up here we'll have an eyebrow, and this time your eyebrow, since you're looking at it 
from the profile will probably be a little bit shorter. Then you've got a little bit of a ridge right there. And again, depending on your person, forehead may be sloped back or like this. Uh, okay, we need the ear, all right? We need the ear. There's the, uh, the nose, so it's gonna be somewhere along there. Here's the eye, it's going to be somewhere. Now, the question is, where along here do we put the ear? Where does it fit? Now, remember how I said when there's not much visual information, we tend to, to collapse that space. The same tendency happens right here. There's not a lot of visual information with the cheek. So what we've got to do is sort of take a measurement. What you can do is take this measurement from the chin to the eye and go from the front of the eye right there and right there marks the back of the ear. I know that's not the neatest. Uh, right there is how you, this distance, excuse me, from there to the middle of the eye, and that distance are just about the same, okay? So that'll give you the right amount of space right here. Now, uh, to get the lines inside of the ear, you've got right, right down here, you've got a, uh, a little guy called a tragus. A lot of people know that now because they get their tragus pierced. Uh, used to, it was a fairly obscure word. Then this line right here, the inside, this is like a spiral. Comes down here. Then you've got a little bump right there called the antitragus because it's right across from the tragus. And then it comes down here like that. And so that, and again, this, I'm drawing lines where sometimes maybe, uh, then there's another, uh, that is like the spiral. That is the same spiral that we get from the golden mean, but I'm not gonna go into that right now. Then there's another bit of cartilage here and here that tends to split right there. And clean that up a little bit, a little bit messy, but. So there more or less is the face. We'll probably, we could add a little more skull on the back side right here. And then when you're adding the neck, again, it's not a vertical post like this. Rather, the neck tends to come out of the chest area and the shoulders back here at a slight angle. When somebody is more or less relaxed, you're going to get something like that. You see, it's a little bit of an angle rather than a vertical. I mean, I suppose I could sit like that, but that wouldn't be very comfortable. Little Adam's apple if you want it. Uh, and then again, hair, hairline, depending on your person. Something like that. Uh, curly hair. So there is a profile. All right, we're going to do something called a three quarter view. And basically, we'll, we'll start out the same uh, with an egg shape, pointy end at the bottom for our chin. But this time, we're going to turn our egg. Now, remember, we've got the eyes right in the middle, right? And if we were looking at somebody head on, they would be looking right out at us. But what we're going to do is take this line right here and turn it such that it's like that. See what I mean? See what we've done? So we've taken that axis of symmetry and moved, uh, rotated the thing a little bit to the left in this case. Okay, so the eyes are going to be in the same place and I'm going to go ahead and draw one eye. Now look where this eye is. This eye is actually in the middle of our egg where the bridge of the nose used to be. Okay, so here's our eye. Uh, you would draw it more or less in its entirety just as you would draw it looking out 
at you if, if, if both eyes were doing the same thing. We've got the eyebrow, we've got a nose over here. I'm going to start this. I'm not gonna finish the nose, I'm just gonna start it. Here's where something different happens with the eye. This eye on this side, if looking right out at you would be, it'd be looking something like that, okay? That's what we would see. But as it turns, I want you to think about this. Your upper lid, your upper lid curves up and then back down. But while it's doing that in real space, it also comes out as it's curving around that eyeball, eyeball and then goes back in. So what starts to happen as it's turning away from you, this corner over here becomes more blunt. And the more it turns, it actually starts turning in on itself. sense. So we've got this, this. Now right here you don't see this because the eyeball is cutting off that corner right here. You see that the eyeball is fitting in there. So that's what's happening over here. Uh, and so what we're going to do is draw the eye in such that that far corner becomes a bit blunt like that right there, okay? So we'll go ahead and put the iris pupil in. Put a little eyebrow like that, okay? Go ahead and put the other eyebrow in on this side, all right? So let's go ahead and put the nose in. Now the nose, again, uh, halfway down or a little less. And then for our mouth, third of the way down, right? That's where the mouth is going to go, okay? So, here, again, the nose, you might see a little bit of that nostril on the other side. There's our modified uh, parentheses. Here's our other parentheses. You might see a little bit of that nostril on the other side. You might not see any of it, depending on how far it's turned away from you. And I haven't done a very good job of drawing that in, but will forgive me for this, okay? Now, the mouth, the same thing is happening that happened over here with the eye. That its, it's far corner has, has blunted itself a little bit, okay? Uh, so if you've got the mouth, here we are looking at a full mouth. Sorry about that. This is what happens in live demonstrations. <laughs> uh, again, we're going to turn this mouth a little bit. This side stays much the same, but this side, that far corner, starts to be, it changes. It's not the same as this one, okay? And the further we turn, that side's pretty much the same, the further we turn, it starts to turn into itself. You see that? Until until you've got something like that, okay? Here, 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 as it's turning away from you. So we wanna draw this in such a manner that this side shortens and starts to turn in on itself, okay? And the lower lip does much the same. So now that corner is reversing. So this side is very different from this side. And this is how you get, notice all the features are pushed over in this direction. We do have a tendency when we're drawing and painting we do want to pull things around frontally. Avoid that. Get everything over to the left. All right, now let's get to
take care of, uh, we want to lose this egg shape. The forehead comes down, there's a little ridge right here. This is called the supraorbital ridge right there. That goes in, then we got a little fullness of the cheek, back out, then back in. Then there's also a little fullness around the mouth right there. And then we're going to add a knob, a bit of a knob to the chin right there, okay? And then for the ear, same thing, I, but this time you're going to have to just make a judgment call. There's no real measurement to take right here. So you're going to have to use the, what I call the TLAR method. That looks about right, okay? So here's our spiral. There's our little tragus, there's the antitragus, and there's our ear. The neck, again, same sort of thing. Maybe she'll be turned, she's this, uh, I guess we've got, so we could. So if you will also look, take a look at the way cartoonists, both in the funny papers or in a, you know, a full length movie feature, Look how the artists uh, handle these situations that I have described briefly here to you. Uh, I should put a turtleneck on her. She's maybe a, maybe she is a French underground. three-quarter view. I hope this this particular area and this particular area are probably the most challenging uh, to get to make that face and head look like in fact it is turned away from you. So if you will practice this both from real people you know have somebody sit for you if they would brothers sisters friends um, and you practice you'll get better and better. How long did it take for you to master something like this? Because you do it, obviously, so effortlessly, effortlessly but, I mean, you... Uh, well, I've been practicing a long time, or, you know, it's, it's, um... I did actually have sort of a formal bit of training from a portrait artist mm -hmm. when I was in high school. Uh, and it was at that point that, you know, I realized these proportions, if you took the mystery away, it took care of, you know, uh, three quarters, right. 75 percent of, right, like of what issues you might otherwise have. Proportioning how, how far everything's yeah. supposed to be is... Yes, but the three-quarter view and understanding this, I kind of began to grasp that concept myself. Mm -hmm. It's even hard to do when you're sculpting three-dimensionally. It's even a challenge there uh, to get that thing to work visually as mm -hmm. you're turning and looking around the edge of Face. Some of the principles still apply. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. So I hope that was helpful and I hope you enjoy your drawing.